All right, we're gonna do brake lines today. We're gonna do some APG brakes. Try to get the rear suspension on and a couple other things. Um, I'll be able to put the rear brakes on, can't put the front brakes on quite yet, but I can at least put the brake lines in. I'm gonna polish them up just a bit. Uh, they're all stainless steel, so just needs like literally lightly going over. Might just hit it with brake cleaner, but yeah, let's we'll start installing it and uh, get it back in the car. So first thing I'm going to do here, guys, is these are the new fittings I have here. Here are my old ones. These weren't actual stainless steel fittings, and as you can tell, they started to corrode. Here's my new stainless steel ones. So yes, a little bit different. Um, I just realized too, they are like actual different fittings there too. These two that I actually took off are actually different fittings. And here's the other thing, look how corroded they was getting. Uh, I guess it was breaking down the material for this. So, wow, um, that just shows you how crazy that can get. But these are actual stainless steel, so I'm gonna replace those. Those went to the actual brakes itself that were up here and here. I'm gonna replace the two adapters I had down there now. They look a little crusty. Again, this is the time to do it. You know, you don't like messing with brakes. It sucks re-bleeding, sucks getting brake fluid out. So the time to do it, replace everything, do it now while I have everything apart. So I'm gonna replace those real quick. Again, let's get down here so you guys can see it. You can tell they're a little crusty. Definitely seen some better days. Um, so yeah, we will pull those out. I'm gonna get some uh, blue towels and put it under that so it doesn't leak any brake fluid anywhere because I, I assume there's brake fluid up to almost the top of those. So yeah, let's get those off and then put some new and shiny on there. I don't know how this happened, but I use different fittings, I guess, every time, but yeah, that's why I just pulled off and I just put two of those on. Uh, you can see the finish on those is a lot nicer. And again, these weren't, I guess, real stainless. Um, same with these tube nuts, I guess these aren't true stainless. They were just coated, so that's unfortunate. The lines itself are, and I can see some corrosion in there, so I have to be very careful with this. Um, hopefully this lasts, because that has me a little bit concerned. Uh, the lines itself are stainless, but those aren't. So I'm glad we're at least replacing the fittings so we don't have to worry about those now. Um, all the brakes, everything will be new, the lines will be new. So the only thing I really gotta worry about is something that makes the tube nuts, which I shouldn't have to worry about that much, but you know, mm, better safe than sorry also. All right, so that's roughly how it needs to go back in there. Again, replace the fittings down there. Here's the lines. I did these back in 2013, my buddy Austin, really did these. Uh, he's the one that really taught me how to do this back in the day, so big shout out to him because without him I wouldn't have really learned how to do this. Uh, he was the one who convinced me to do it. He was a big Honda guy at the time, and they were much better at the whole clean, the, the whole setup. That's, and I got a lot of inspiration from Hondas back in the day. Now I get a lot of inspiration from the Australian market. Pretty much where I pulled most of my inspiration from is the Australians, uh, the Aussies and Kiwis. Uh, those guys with their, their GTR builds really are inspiring that they just go like absolutely insane with cleanliness. This isn't even close to the builds I watch over there, but I wanted to do something kind of like that. This is clean, but not that clean. At least this is going to be a driver and we don't have the weather that they do. So it's, shit's still going to get messed up. It just, it is what it is, but that's roughly in there. I don't want to take those off because I still have fluid in that. I capped them off. I'm going to have to put a bucket slash something under that be, uh, when I take those off. It doesn't like rush out, but it will drip out. I'll put a rag and stuff and tighten it up, hit it with brake cleaner. Good to go. Makes it a lot easier for bleeding. It keeps that from going dry and have to bench bleed it and all that BS. So it's a lot easier that way. So I don't know where that cut off at, but yeah, the brake lines are in. The one thing I don't like that I did fix on her car is I have that brake like over in this area here, so it's a little bit more hidden. And see how it's rubbing up against the body? I'm gonna have to bend that line out some. Need to put one more clamp right there, so I have three clamps and use that factory one there. And then we should be good. Again, I can't do the brakes till we get the rest of the parts. Um, pretty much need the upper and lower arms and the knuckles and stuff are getting done right now. They're getting powder coated. I gotta take it down. This is the back side of those. So, yeah, freaking sweet. So let's get this up in the air and uh, let's actually get the rear wheels off and we can put the rear brakes on. Clean some of the stuff up back there, but yeah, we get the rear brakes on this hog. That's gonna be pretty awesome to see. So I have to thank my buddy Sean and realistically his brother Mark for uh, lending me these wheels. These are OZ racing wheels off a second gen Eclipse. Uh, they're actually really good condition too, uh, but they both had eclipses. He sold his, so he kind of got rid of all the stockpile, but he still had these wheels, so it was perfect for rolling the car around. Tires didn't hold air that well, but it didn't matter. Uh, what was funny is I couldn't get the calipers or anything in, and I could barely get the rotors in, and um, that's only a 330 millimeter rear rotor. So I just had to have it on so I could bolt the wheels on, but now I could take these off and uh, yeah, actually bolt everything up, get the calipers on, 
hook up the lines, do everything that I want to do. I also need to get off the rear suspension. So let's do that in this video too. Maybe before I can put the brakes on, I'll take those off. Just for the fact that if I can get that out, I'd probably be a little bit easier without the brakes there. I don't know if it matters or not. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So just that wipes off. I just got to get all that crud off of there from the bolts bolt or the wheels bolted onto it there. Hopefully the new wheels encompass all that area. I would imagine they do uh, just so you don't see it, but they're just, everything's just dusty from being at the body shop. I just need something to roll it on. Again, they're calipers at the end of the day. They're going to be dusty, dirty, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, the whole car needs washed badly. Uh, it's a little dusty, but got to get the coils off. I think I'm going to unbolt from up top first. Then we'll do the bottom one, slide it out. Um, and make sure that it fits, but I have a feeling that my coilovers now aren't going to be quite long enough and I'm going to also once again need a longer shock tube. We'll see. I might be wrong, but we'll see. Okay, so the brakes are on guys. There's not much to them here. Um, APG four piston rear brakes. There's going to be eight piston fronts. These are 330 millimeter rears. There's going to be 365 millimeter fronts. Um, these are their anodized green. Now, I was trying to find something like this because I wanted a green, but I didn't want a bright green. I wanted like a British racing green. And I couldn't find anything that made me happy because I wanted it not to be too flat, not too shiny. And I wanted something to be dark enough because I know anodizing can change color. So to make it look even darker, I made sure the logo was a dark black. That's powder coated gloss black. And then the forge part here, I had them just make it out of the machine aluminum. So they just machined it out and then just left the rest uh, coated. Came with pads, everything. Comes with new stainless steel lines, as you can see. New bolts, new nuts, everything. This is a radial mount, so meaning it bolts from the top, not from the back. Uh, that's how real brakes should be. Uh, very nice setup. These are made in Taiwan, too. You guys heard me talk about it before. Uh, makes it pretty basic. Now, it's funny seeing, look how dirty the back is here. I need to take these old uh, Megan coilovers out, too. But look how old and dirty that stuff is. It just, it's just literally funny to see. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to pop those coils out, and then I'm also going to start in the fuel system here. But another thing I want to show you guys is I got some of my old brake system back in up front. So I've got the stainless steel lines on. These were made many, many moons ago, guys, so don't judge. You see the stainless steel lines over here, runs down there, replace those fittings down below, up there. Looks phenomenal. I'm very, very happy with the way that turned out and looks. All right, now it's time for the fuel system. Again, big thank you to Raceworks here. These are their full flow fittings. Boom, 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 right there, Raceworks. Go ahead and order those from TI Performance down below, guys. Love these full flow looking fittings. Like, look how just awesome they are. But this is 6 a.m. and 4 a.m. line I'm running. Uh, the line I had up before, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just like, let's go new. If I have it, let's use it, let's do it, let's go fresh. Uh, so we come back here to the tank. Get walk my happy butt back here. We have a powerhouse racing hanger. Uh, this hanger I've had in here for quite some time. Uh, we're gonna run two lines down through the hole here. I already have a Kaizen relay set up and a uh, dual pump 525 pumps. Now I might need a third pump, which this hanger allows for, but then I have to run new wiring. So at this time, we're not doing it. I'm staying away for it for now. Tech, like I said, for now, we will see. Um, you can see the extra pins there. Uh, but what I wanna do is go ahead and push the uh, fuel lines down. I need to get it down through this. So I might need a secondary person because it is a very tight fit down through there. there Isn't a whole lot of room. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, guys, I'm pumped. So uh, let's start feeding that down through. This is by far the most pain in the ass part of all this. If I, oh my God, it is such a tight fit down through there. It is such a pain in the ass. Like they literally gave you no room and I get it. You can drop the tank and you can do this and that and blah, 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 blah. But they just definitely could have gave you a little bit more room. Ah, bam, Ricky Bobby, there we go. All right, let's put this hog up in the air and pull some of this line through. All right, so there's where the lines are. Again, this is a 45 degree. I run off this one here and then a 90 off this one. Now, PHR or Powerhouse Racing has updated this hanger where these shoot bow straight out the front. So now you can run a straight fitting directly off of it. So need, no need for this 45. Uh, since it's one of the older versions, um, I have to run that 45 again, nothing wrong with it. It's just, they keep updating and probably the one I have in hers is now changed because like I said, that one has a straight fitting zone. They probably updated again. That's what companies do. They keep improving their product, which is a good thing to see and have. So yeah, I will put those on uh, before I do that. I need to put the ring back on. Um, I'm hoping the pumps are good. I probably have to drain the tank anyways, but just to make these lines here today, put the ring back on, make sure everything's exactly how I want it. 
And then, uh, yeah, start making the lines down below. I try to get them all laid out and then put the last two fittings on and we're good. And all right, so that's what it looks like again. 45 off, 90 here, got two pumps. I could tuck that under, but I don't like putting that stress on it for right now. I've got this extended cap also. Uh, Wade Hill made me this back in the day, works over T1. I've got a powerhouse racing version on that, but these are nice. I didn't, technically you don't need it with these. They designed it so it fits on a factory, but it's nice just to have it so you know it's not pressing down anything. It's nice because of this, it gives me more room. I don't have to like shove it down in. And I just worry about rubbing and things of that nature. Again, I can pop this back on if I want to, uh, but I'm probably gonna have to take this back out, drain the fuel, check the pumps and everything but I want to at least just have it here have it the exact bolted up tightened down the exact length and I also put this on it too uh, right here just because I was worried about that edge rubbing on the line here so I just had this big piece of uh, fire hose or fire coating uh, just sitting there it doesn't look the prettiest but at least protects the line so I don't have to worry about it getting punctured last thing you want to do is have a fuel fire so get it back in the air and start routing this all right guys so we're gonna start here in the back and again just being under here, I want to show you this too. The tow hook back here, I also had powder coated, uh, as you guys can see here, just because it was just really, just rusty and crusty. The rest of the car isn't nice, but again, something I'm bolt on and off. Everything else went down, might as well get it done. But you can see the rest, this whole back end needs dropped and done too. You can see all the rubber that's still in there. Look at all that. <laughs> I haven't cleaned it out. Um, bushings probably need to be done. But again, you'd see how much powder coating and everything really cleans things up. And you can see Titan sway bar back here that what is silver still. Um, but the whole reason I'm under here is the fuel line. So I wanted to show you guys this. You can see here's where it comes out. And then what I do is I take these hose separators and I drill them out uh, because obviously the other side isn't a through hole. So I drill them out and then put a 10 millimeter bolt that's a little bit longer through and then use some of these factory holes to keep the hoses separated and tight instead of zip ties. Do you need to do this? No, but you can get like a four or five pack of these, very cheap from Raceworks. Like I'm serious, like 20 bucks gets you five of them. And it's way more than enough because you really need three or four. Um, and I'm gonna show you here. So this is the first one. Then next one, see if we can see from here, right there. Next one is up there. And I try to keep that along with the factory plastic piece that holds the brake lines up. But you can see, holds it up there. I used to have a zip tie there. Then as we come down here, there is one zip tie right there just because I can't get my hand in there. If I drop this whole thing out, I will actually put a bracket there. Um, but it just, I didn't feel like messing with it. So there is a zip tie up in there that you guys can't see. Then it comes down to these powerhouse racing brackets. These hold the brake lines and the fuel lines. The only place I then don't use the PHR bracket is here again. I don't think you really need this. I just did it because I have the brackets and I like everything. No way of moving. I just. I don't want any rubbing, any chafing, anything like that. That's the whole reason I don't like zip ties too because you're trying to pinch the line. This separates it and just clamps them just enough. So I like the idea of that. And as you get down here, so you guys can see it better, it comes here and then goes like that. So we've got the rest of the PHR hangers here, here, and here. And it comes up to a radium fuel filter. I like this setup just for the fact that it bolts to the factory spot. No holes need to be drilled and it's designed for our car. Then you need to run 145 degree fitting off here and that's it. I then use a 6 a.m. hose up through this. Unfortunately, I thought the hose was long enough. This is leftover hose I had. It might be a skosh too short, so I actually have to extend it. I might cut it like back here, put an extension, and run the line up. Sucks, but it is what it is. Doesn't hurt anything per se, but it's just one of those mental things like, damn it, Ryan, really? Um, so yeah, once I get the engine in, which I already had the line stuff done, and bolt it up. You guys can see those fittings there for the brake lines I did earlier. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'm really, really happy with that. Again, if we come down here, come that way. Love these. Again, this also has an extra spot then if you want to do a dual feed setup. I don't really see the necessity in that, but it's there. Or you can run like I did in the past. I used to run my power cable through here, but uh, I eliminated that. It's now ran through the chassis of the car uh, on the inside, so it's not on the outside of the car. All right, guys, another thing we're going to do today, I'm just going to go ahead and install this Dula Designs pedal. Uh, comes with these standoffs, and I do love this. I believe these are titanium, um, but they come with these black uh, washers now, or black screws, or bolts, I should say. So the old ones, when you put them in here, were like stainless steel. And one suggestion I had said was, hey, just so it you know kind of blends a little bit more black, so he started doing black. I believe these are titanium, which makes it cool. Uh, I believe these are PVD coated also, so they won't go bad. What you have to put on first is these little standoffs. There is screws in the body, which I'll show. They're not bolts that are built in the body. Now there is like a plastic insert in here. I'm not sure the exact material, but it's like a plastic type material. Now, one thing I'm gonna make crystal clear, as clear as possible, please listen to this part, guys. When installing this, if it feel like it's not bottoming out yet and it's getting very tight, 
please back this out. And what you're going to do is take a small drill um, and just drill it out ever so slightly. Nothing crazy, ever so slightly. So I think this is a 532nd here. And see that can just barely, I could probably push it through right now. Um, but you're just gonna round it out just ever so slightly. Now, uh, most of the kits come with a drill just for this case now, but I wanted to go ahead and mention it. If it's getting tight, if you feel like it's going to get snap off, please, please, please back it out. Do not go crazy. It's just a little like screw on stud. Once we get inside the car, you'll see it. So please take your time. This also has the little hex area here. This uses a 17 millimeter. Uh, I'm gonna use my stubby 17 here uh, to install this. So you don't need to use an adjustable. It fits a 17 perfectly. Now let's get down inside the car here. I wish it wasn't on the lift because I could open the door a little bit more. But if we get down here, All right, guys, so I found that the 532nd there was the ideal size for that. Um, I could get it to go on, and then just at the very end, I finally had to use the wrench, so I had to turn it twice with the 17 millimeter wrench. But for the most part, guys, you should be able to spin this on by hand, like just spinning it on. Again, those little studs are very small, so using a 17 millimeter, which is a big wrench, and if you've got to crank it down, you're going to snap it off. I repeat, you're going to snap it off, so you should be able to spin this on. Again, it is just a dead pedal. It's just to rest your foot. There should be no serious force on this thing. So guys, just remember that. Again, factory, it's plastic. So do not go crazy. I keep reiterating this because I've heard of people breaking them off. Please just listen to me from the bottom of my heart. Don't make that mistake. All right, guys, so this is what it should look like when installed. Again, once you get those, let me get my head down here a little bit more. Once you get those mounts on, all you do is put those little 10 millimeter screws in, or bolts, I should say, and you're done. Like, it's that straightforward. So you just screw those pieces in. Um, I screwed them all in by hand because I had a, the holes big enough that I could get them down. At the very end, like I said, I had to kind of use a 17 millimeter, but it really didn't. Again, your foot is just to rest on this, but that being said, it's on there tight, it ain't going anywhere. Um, but this isn't like your clutch or brake. I mean, you're not putting any serious force on this. You're just to rest your foot. I mean, you could still stand on it. I uh, wouldn't recommend it. Again, like the old one was plastic for Christ's sake. So that is, that is it. It's very simple to install. Again, just make sure you don't over tighten those stands. If they feel like they're not going on or they feel really tight, pull it out, drill out the inside a little bit and you'll be good to go.